Good morning, Comet family and friends everywhere. We welcome you to another Sunday School lesson, which is under the guidance of our esteemed pastor, Reverend Dr. Williams, Jesse T. Williams, Jr., our Minister of Christian Education, Reverend Dr. Charlene Faisal, our Deacon Supervisor, Deacon Willard Tolson, and our Sunday School Superintendent, Brother Ronald Smith. Today's lesson will be brought to you by Deacon Timothy Chadwick and Deacon Willard Tolson. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to see the second Sunday of the new year 2021. Mm -hmm. We are feeling blessed and the new year only started. Yes. Our spirits are filled with your love mm -hmm. that you have given us to share with others as we enjoy each day of this wonderful new year. Yes. We are reminded of what your son, our Lord and Savior told us when he said for us not to fear. Mm -hmm. For we are reminded Yes, yes. That he has overcome the world. That's right, that's right. Our hope is resting on Jesus, mm -hmm. who has increased our faith yes. and removed our doubts. That's right. We are marching to a new song, mm -hmm. being guided by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And with the sound of heavenly angels, filling our hearts with great expectation yes, yes. of your glory. Yes, sir. Guide us this day through our lesson. Guide us. Fill us with your word. Fill us. Empower us to live righteously and justly. Empower us. In the name of all that is holy, we pray. In the name of Jesus, In we thank you. In the name of Jesus. And the power of your love. Amen. Amen. Last week's lesson was taken from Luke chapter 4. Verses 14 to 22. However, there was a lot left untold from that chapter. I want to give us just a portion of what we did not cover that may relate to today's lesson also. Remember, we left Jesus in the synagogue in Nazareth. Mm -hmm. A lot of things were happening to him when he finished speaking there. And he left them and went into another town called Capernaum. Yes. And he found another synagogue that he went into. Mm -hmm. And in the synagogue, there was a man who had a spirit of unclean demon. Yes. And he cried out aloud with a loud voice saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Jesus of Nazareth. Have you come to destroy us? Mm -hmm. I know you, who you are, the Holy One of God. The Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, mm -hmm. saying, be quiet mm -hmm. and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in the midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. And they were all amazed, amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, what a word this is. What a word. For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirit. He commands the unclean spirit. And they come out. Mm -hmm. Now, listen to this. Verse 38. Mm -hmm. And he arose from the synagogue mm -hmm. and entered Simon's house. Yes. And Simon's wife's mother was sick with a high fever. Mm -hmm. And they made a request of him concerning her. He stood over her and rebuked the fever. Rebuked the fever. And it left her. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to say that again. He stood over her. Mm -hmm. He didn't ask anybody to go run out and get some medication. Mm -hmm. 
He didn't send anybody to the pharmacy to get us some over-the-counter medication. Mm -hmm. But he looked down at her, and she had to be filled with high fever mm -hmm. because you could touch her forehead and it was hot. All right. And all he did was look down at her and rebuke the fever. He rebuked the fever. That means he told the fever, get out of her. Get out of you her. You don't belong in her. Mm -hmm. Get away from her. Mm -hmm. And the fever left. All right. I don't know how it left. I don't know whether it went running. I don't know whether it went scooping. But it got out mm -hmm. because she got up immediately and started to serve them. Mm -hmm. Rebuke the spirit. But now, rebuke the COVID. We're going to open today's lesson <laughs> from the book of Luke, mm -hmm. chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Mm -hmm. Title of our lesson is Call to Significance. Call to Significance. Called to Significance. Mm -hmm. The aim for change is by the end of this lesson, we will contemplate, contemplate. a miraculous catch of fish, mm -hmm. reflect on Simon's changing attitude reflect. towards Jesus, mm -hmm. and hear Jesus' instructions and eagerly obey them. Now, please. Open your Bibles or your Sunday school material if you have it and read along with us, mm -hmm. starting with verse 1 to 11. All right. You want to go ahead? Start. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon <coughs> Jesus to hear the word of God, Jesus stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answered, saying to him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish, and their nets break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the drought of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the son of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Okay, now we're going to get started trying to explain what we just read. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be asking Brother Chadwick some questions 
And each question that I'm going to ask, I may try to give an answer myself. But I want Brother Chadwick to expound a little bit more. I'm going to start with verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Mm -hmm. My question is, what was the significance of Jesus standing by the lake of Gennesaret? Mm -hmm. I had a couple of reasons. I said, the people followed him. Because mm -hmm. when, when he left, Simon's house, he was trying to go to find a desert place mm -hmm. somewhere where he can be by himself. Mm -hmm. But the people were following him and they were constantly searching for him because they wanted to hear the word of God. They wanted to hear the word of God. My other thing is that he would have to give them the word of God. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What was the significance of Jesus standing by the lake of Gennesaret? There's so many things, Deacon Tolson. Um, but one thing, I think he was moved by the masses of people who came not to touch him, but to hear the word of God. They came, it says in the text, uh, to, I'll read it. They came to him to hear the word of God. Now, last week, we remember Jesus reading the word in the synagogue. But the leaders in the synagogue didn't appear to believe the word they heard. They had the scrolls, but they didn't seem to believe the word written in the scroll. Some folks have Bibles but they rarely open them. They have the word, but they do not read the word they have. Some folks read the Bible simply because it's the world's number one bestseller of all times. Never stopping to contemplate, as our aim for change says, never stopping to Reflect, as our aim for change says, never stopping to hear the voice of God in the word of God. Praise God. And who is the word of God? Jesus Praise is God. the word of God. Contemplate, reflect, and hear, believing you will hear the voice of God in the words of Jesus, and eagerly obey them. Let me do a little more, Deacon Tolson, before you jump in. Last week, we offered a few uh, application points. One was sanctified listening, the process of turning off the distractions of life, turning off the television, the radio, turning off video games, taking a time out from the club, being noticeably absent from the pub, taking a moment to think, to contemplate, and to hear the word of God. If I might take an uh, example from the common culture, there was an artist. His name was Mr. Pendergrass. You all remember Teddy Pendergrass. And he would vociferate with great energy, turn them off and light a candle. Turn all the lights of distraction off and focus on the one light, the light that came in the darkness, the light that came into the world to expel the darkness. It was another point. Prayerful listening was another application point that we shared. Listening while you pray. More important than the words you say is an attitude of listening for what the word is saying to you. This means 
anyone can pray. Faithful point or application point number three was faithful listening. Believing that if you turn off the lights of the world and pray earnestly in the spirit, that you will hear the voice of God as you study his word, the words of Jesus, and obey him. Now let me... Did that answer your question in part, Deacon Tolson? Yes, it did. Now let's move on mm -hmm. to verse number two. All right. And saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. My question is, what did Jesus see standing on the shore and what was so important about it? I said that he saw two ships, empty of fishermen, as the men were busy washing their nets. Fishing had ended. Mm -hmm. He also saw a platform mm -hmm. where he could speak from. All right. So what did you say? What do you say? Well, I think the significance or some of the significance of him uh, taking his seat in Simon's ship. Well, that's Because he did sit down yeah. uh, to... Uh, but the question I ask is, mm -hmm. what did Jesus see standing on the shore? Okay. He saw, the, so he saw the crowds of people desiring to hear the voice of God. Praise God. Praise God. Go ahead. All right. And I think it moved him uh, to tell Simon to cast out a little bit so I can teach the people. Praise God. Praise mm -hmm. God. And verse 3 says, and he entered mm -hmm. into one of the ships, which was Simon's, mm -hmm. and prayed him that he was thrust out a little from the land. Mm -hmm. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Mm -hmm. Now, I said, why did he enter Simon's ship? Mm -hmm. I said he was led by the Holy Spirit. Yes. For God had already picked his disciples, mm -hmm. and he needed to start teaching Simon. Mm -hmm. What do you say? I say you're right. I say that uh, Simon is mentioned a number of times in this chapter. And whenever uh, a word or a name is mentioned multiple times, the Spirit is asking you to pay attention. This is the beginning of Jesus teaching his disciples. This is the beginning of him training these fishermen to become fishers of men. Praise God. This is the beginning of him teaching the disciples how to hear the voice of God in the word of God. So this is the beginning of his tutoring his disciples. Go ahead, Deacon. Never for, it's in the same verse again. Number three, it says, and he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, mm -hmm. and prayed him that he was thrust out a little from the land. Mm -hmm. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Mm -hmm. What was so significant about having Simon moved the ship a little way from the shore. I said that teaching obedience mm -hmm. was a thing that he had to do because he didn't ask Simon. Mm -hmm. He told him. Okay. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, before you go any further, Brother Chadwick, mm -hmm. 
You already touched it a little bit, but last week you asked me to express the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in the life of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I ended with the reading of Luke chapter 4, verse 14, mm -hmm. which demonstrated through the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus was healing the sick mm -hmm. of all kinds and preaching the good news to the people. Mm -hmm. Brother Chadwick, you made an eloquent statement uh -oh. that needs to be continually emphasized to all of us. Mm -hmm. You look at verse 1 in our lesson, mm -hmm. and it says, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, yes. you please remind us of that eloquent statement. Uh -oh. I know that Jesus healed the sick, mm -hmm. straightened the broken limbs, mm -hmm. and removed demons. Yes. I know that the paralyzed were made to run and leap for joy. Yes. But there is something else he did. Mm -hmm. Please, Brother Chadwick, tell us again. He opened their understanding so that they might hear the voice of God. Praise God. And when you hear the voice of God, you're going to be transformed. Praise God. There's no way you can encounter God and hear his voice and not be changed. Praise God. God is a transforming God. Praise God. He's going to make us what we ought to be. Just by hearing his voice, you're going to be changed. Praise God. Now, he had to... You had to be true, what you just got through saying mm -hmm. about hearing the voice of God. Mm -hmm. It had to be true. Mm -hmm. Because here, th this man was down there by the lake. Yes. And got inside of the ship mm -hmm. and had Simon push out a little bit. Yes. Away from the shore mm -hmm. so that he could speak to the people the word of God which they were coming to hear. Yes. Because it says that they were following him mm -hmm. because they wanted to hear the word of God. That's right. And I remember you said that when you listen to the word of God, yes. if you hear the word of God, yes. and if you pay attention to the word of God, yes. and if you let the Holy Spirit move within you, yes. you're going to hear the voice of God. Hear the now voice these of people God. were standing there on the shore, yes. and I tell you, this is so true about what you said, because right there on the ship was God himself. Right there on the ship, was Emmanuel. The word. Right there on the ship was Mary's little baby. And the angel said, that thing in you is holy yes. and will be called the Son of God. Yes. And Isaiah said, his name will be Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Meaning God with us. Yes. So right then and there, mm -hmm. the voice of God was on that ship and it was giving the people on land the word of God. Yes, sir. That means what you said, brother. If I come to church on Sunday yes. and I hear Reverend Williams preach the word of God, yes. and if I listen very carefully, listen carefully, and I let the Holy Spirit move within let me, the Spirit and move I keep you. quiet, yes. I will hear the voice of God yes. coming to me. Yes. And he speaks the word of God. I believe what you're saying to me, Brother Chadwick, is if not only Reverend Williams, yes. but if Reverend Morgan yes. was to preach the word of God, That's right. I will hear the voice of God. That's right. If Reverend Faison preaches the word of God, yes. I will hear the voice of God. That's right. If Reverend Tanya 
Jackson preaches the word of God. Yes. I will hear the voice of God. Yes. If all the ministers of convent would suddenly get on the pulpit and preach the word of God, yes. I will hear the voice of God. Go ahead, Deacon. Not only will I hear the voice of God, but the voice of God will be speaking to me yes. and only to me. Mm -hmm. He will speak it to you. He will speak it to you. He will speak it to everybody. Yes. Another word. Whatever he says to you is meant for you and you alone. That's right. Praise God. So I have to say thank you, thank Brother God. Chadwick, for bringing us that reminder that if we pay attention to the word of God, mm -hmm. if we pay attention and let the Holy Spirit work in us, That's right. we are going to hear the voice of God. These people came to hear the word of God and got more than they bargained for. Amen, they amen. They got the voice of God speaking to them from the ship. All right. Let me, let me have a little bit of it, Deacon Tulsa. Um, about these people that pressed upon Jesus, uh, who wanted to hear the voice of God, wanted to hear the word of God. Remember, it said he came to heal the brokenhearted. Well, there were some brokenhearted folk in that crowd, folks grieving the loss of their loved ones. There were folk in bondage, in that crowd, due to the, due to sometimes bad decision making, and other times due to circumstances beyond their control. Amen. There were some blind folk in that crowd who couldn't see how they were going to make it. They didn't know where their next meal was coming from. They couldn't see how they were going to make ends meet. There were some poor folk in that crowd, rich materially, but poor in spirit. Rich in spirit, but poor materially. Folks in bondage who needed deliverance from ungodly dependencies and addictions. There were some battered and bruised folk in that crowd. Praise God. Folks seeking relief from the domestic violence meted on them by the Roman government and church tribunals. Vicariously speaking, Deacon Tolson, you and I were in that crowd. Praise God. Believers of all ages were in that crowd. Praise God. Believers at all stages were in that crowd, all listening to hear, hear the, word the word of God. Of God. Can, I, can I take it a little further? Uh, Jesus saw two ships, you said. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Why were the ships empty? Why were the ships empty? Because they hadn't caught any fish. They returned to the shore. Praise God. Left their boats to clean yep. their nets. Yep. Contemplation, yep. reflection, and sanctified listening all play a part in the emptying process. Praise God. In preparation for an indwelling by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. As living sanctuaries, we come before God as empty vessels needing to be filled. But if the boat is filled with junk, there is no room for anything else, Deacon Tolson. If you have too much junk in the trunk, you can't walk the walk. There you go. Talk the talk. There you go. Or run the race. Unless you empty the ship, you can't expect the ship to be filled. Praise Just God. a little more. The church house is temporarily empty right now. And I do believe the doors of the church will reopen. But don't think you're going to pick up where you left off. Don't think you are going to conduct business as usual. Be careful what you bring into God's house. Be careful what behaviors you model before the people of God. Remember, churches of great reputation 
lay in the ruins all around the world. Be the church people need you to be. Be the church God expects you to be. Amen. Want to jump on in there? Praise God. Now, when he had left speaking, mm -hmm. he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. Mm -hmm. What was so significant about telling Simon to launch out into the deep mm -hmm. and let down your nets for a drought? Mm -hmm. Jesus noticed, like you said, mm -hmm. that the ships were empty of fish mm -hmm. when he stood at the lake. Mm -hmm. He noticed that. Jesus had to get obedience from Simon and mm -hmm. the men. Mm -hmm. Starting with his teaching. That's right. So go ahead, tell me what you found so significant about launching out. Well, before he launched into the deep, he told them to launch into shallow water. And I believe he had to teach Peter something about faith and obedience. There was an evangelist that came by here some decades ago. And I think he caught the essence of this lesson. And it was about faith. He said, if your faith is shallow, then the water's deep. But if your faith is deep, then the water's shallow. And I think Jesus had to show Simon in the shallow water what faith was and what obedience was before he could launch him out into the deep water. Praise God. And now verse 5 says, And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night mm -hmm. and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Now, I said that he wanted to demonstrate his own importance as a fisherman. I agree with you, Deacon Tellson. Because after all, <laughs> he knows that fish in that, in that lake, you only fish at night. He was a fisherman, Deacon Because uh, you can't go out there in the daytime and scare the fish and expect to catch them. That's right. Nevertheless, he says, nevertheless, I will follow your lead. That's where faith comes in. Yes, it does. Nevertheless, because mm -hmm. he remembered something. Mm -hmm. Peter remembered something. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I will follow your lead. He also remembered mm -hmm. the removal of his mother-in-law's high fever. Okay. Praise okay. God. All right. So he had to realize, I'm in the presence of somebody mm -hmm. that's different. All right. You know? So, nevertheless, <laughs> I'm going to follow your lead. All right. I think it shows some progression in Peter. I think it moved from hesitation to confirmation. I think he began to think, well, I'm the fisherman. I know, about, I know more about fish than you do. I've been fishing all my life. But then, I believe, he started to hear the word of God and the voice of God. And at that moment, he was transformed. He was changed enough to say to Jesus, at thy word, I will do what you say. Praise I will God. obey. Go ahead, Deacon Tolson. And when they had done this, they had closed a great multitude of fishes mm -hmm. and their net break. Mm -hmm. Why did so many fish appear? Mm -hmm. well, I said the power of God mm -hmm. produced a miracle. Yes. And I said never had so many fish been caught at one time. Mm -hmm. Well, the fish also represents the unsaved masses of the world. And he was going to use these disciples, Praise God. Peter, of whom was one of the leaders. Praise God. He was going to use these disciples 
to spread his word, his good news, to every corner of the world. Praise God. Yes, he did. And so many would come that not all the churches on earth could hold them. They're going to come from everywhere. They're going to overflow. The nets are going to break. And they're going to be shouting, glory, hallelujah. Praise God. Glory, Praise hallelujah. God. Praise God. Go ahead, Deacon Toast. Yes. <laughs> and verse 7 says, and they beckoned unto their partners, mm -hmm. which were in the other ship, mm -hmm. that they should come and help them. Yes. And they came and filled both the ships mm -hmm. so that they began to sink. How did they beckon their partners? <laughs> well, did it they call it, out to them? No, it said they shook their heads. They sort of threw back their heads. But you, you know, I think that the Spirit of God beckoned them. I think they saw what was going on and they were compelled, as my friend Bill Aiken would say, they were compelled by the Spirit of God to come and give a hand. And as disciples of God, we are to compel others to, to help. come to and help. To help. To help. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Yes, we were. Now, verse 8. Mm -hmm. When Simon saw it, mm -hmm. he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, I said that he was afraid of Jesus' holiness. Mm -hmm. He saw his sinful nature, mm -hmm. and he felt that he was not worthy of Jesus. All right. He remembered seeing all that fish coming up and realizing that's a miracle. Mm -hmm. So that's the power of God. Get away from me, Jesus. All right. Get away from me, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I am not worthy to be near you. That's right. I am a sinful man. Yes. I am a man of uncleanness. Yes. Get away from me, Jesus. Yes. Find somebody else that's holy and worthy to be around you. Go ahead. Oh, praise God. Praise this God. This is why he said, this mm -hmm. is why he was afraid. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. What do you say to that? Well, I'm going to take a more uh, a physical approach. Uh, you did the spiritual thing mightily. Uh, but I think Simon was amazed at the fish. <laughs> I mean, he was a fisherman. And he saw all these fish, and I think he was taken, not by the miracle, but by the fish. See, you said he was taken by the miracle, and he was. But I think he also was amazed at those fish. I don't think he really fully realized yet who Jesus was. But this was the beginning because he would use that great drought of fish to teach him about becoming a fisher of men. Verse 9 says... For he was astonished. Astonished. And all that were with him at the drought of the fishes which they had taken. Mm -hmm. They were all astonished. At the fish. Okay. So why were all that were with Simon astonished? Never had they seen such a miracle. Mm -hmm. They knew that they were in the presence of of holiness. Mm -hmm. This is why they all were astonished mm -hmm. as well as science. All right, go I'll ahead. go with it. Move on, brother. <laughs> Finally, Deacon Tolson, we have two more verses, and then we're going to have to close on out. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And verse 10 says, mm -hmm. and so was also James and John, mm -hmm. the sons of Zebedee, mm -hmm. which were partners with Simon. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto Simon, mm -hmm. Fear not, mm -hmm. from henceforth thou shalt call men. Mm -hmm. How did Jesus calm them? He spoke assurance to them. Yes. Fear not, from this time on, 
you will catch men. That's right. And then he said, I need you mm -hmm. to follow me. Mm -hmm. Because the last verse says, when they had brought their ships to land, mm -hmm. I would want to remind you that when they brought the ships to land, yes. not one fish was lost. All right. Not one fish was given, taken away mm -hmm. from that net, All from right. that ship. They, were, they came back loaded down with fish. Yes. Okay? But they saw all that and they said, we don't need this. We don't need this fish. What we need, we need to follow him. Yes. We need to follow him. All right. We need to go with him. Mm -hmm. Because this is what they did. They forsook all. They forsook all. And followed him. Amen, Deacon Tolson. Amen. Contemplate, <laughs> reflect, and hear. Praise God. Let us pray. Praise God. Our Father and our God, we thank you for being present with us, for helping us to look into your word that we might hear the word, and hear your voice in the word. Continue to speak to us, speak to our pastor and his family, care for them, protect them, speak to our convent family, throw your arms of protection around them, and help us all, O oh Lord, to hear your voice during these tumultuous times. Let your Holy Spirit come now and dwell richly within us that we may honor thee, that we might listen to thee, that we might obey thee and give your name the glory and praise. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brother.